hello everyone and welcome back to the channel you know it's wolf and i'm back with another video this one might spark some um conversations in the comments so yes probably see the title on the thumbnail you know what it is black american culture is dying ghetto blacks are to blame so i am black so i'm interested in what she has to say yes and um i i i, I think i know what she's talking about based from her thumb her thumbnail the sexy red the christian rocks the freaking ah uh, degenerate behavior of our black people on the internet and in rap and freaking especially the females though especially the females not all of them uh, obviously not all of them <clears throat> because there are freaking very talented female and 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 male rappers that happen to be black and freaking they do not get as much attention as them <sighs> and, freak, and, 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 I, and i think it's sad i think it's sad they need more attention and um one of them is um i think uh little, little sims she's crazy bro and she kind of does like a little bit of activism in her rap uh, uh, i'm there for her rapping talent not necessarily for the message even though the message is is a good message she she fighting for what she believe in and uh, that's better situations for women yeah if, if uh, uh, that aside like and subscribe to the channel if you're new yes welcome to the channel and um welcome back to the regular subscribers yes people who have already subscribed yes let's get this it's wolf yeah here is my little two cent that nobody asked for i am sick of seeing <coughs> black americans in the media on social media in the news doing crime walking around next to naked the women the men perpetuating gang violence substance abuse the absolute worst of our community is oversaturating the media even though they make up a small percentage of all of black americans the <laughs> Yo, ho, 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 right there just that little tidbit just that little just that little bit right there they're oversaturating the media and people who do not um, subscribe to that, like, overtly over excessive ghetto behavior. I, kn I know because I freaking have a little sister that freaking exemplifies or freaking exhibits those behaviors. And uh, recently, I freaking heard her talking about, like, Suki Hana, that freaking <clears throat> abomination. Yes, uh, that, that the freaking you normally associate with sexy red and freaking those type of people she's an adult she can do whatever she wants but that is one of the freaking things i'm talking about I'm, i live in jamaica and uh, we get most of our entertainment from america we sometimes we get it from um england me because i'm tired of some of that i go to japan for my entertainment anime but <clears throat> that being the case majority of the people the young people growing up are influenced by the media that comes from america and uh, if what they are seeing is this overly overt um, ghetto black people from America, they're going to emulate that. And it's going to freaking not uh, foster like constructive um, character traits that can be helpful in their life when they get older. And when they get older, they're going to be behaving like that. And it's, yeah, I'm telling you, it, it, it is it, when they don't want to listen to their parents and go in the direction of their morals and values that parents want to instill in them because they're influenced by whatever media they consume it's gonna cause problems for the next generation and it looks very sad <laughs> let's go our morality within black communities has been slowly declining over the past 20 years and no one is talking about it no one is saying anything about it or trying to address it and if you do you are often told that you're policing black bodies if you say <laughs> women stop getting on the internet and in, and in the media twerking walking around with little clothes on you're you're, you're can, people tell you that you're uh, policing policing bodies policing black bodies or it's respectability politics i don't know what the hell respectability politics is but she probably gonna explain it i'm not sure but what <clears throat> one of the criticisms that you get when you talk about these things that look that that look bad to like other people about black people is that freaking you're not you are not black and you as a black person has black skin that you are not black we the, the correct freaking thing to, to to say is that 
you are not a part of, of the black ghetto culture and that is what they are freaking like using to free uh to as a blanket statement for all of black culture when black culture is far more um expansive than that far greater things have come from black culture than just that 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 vocal minority that oversaturates the media and uh, and uh, most people are not going to see that because that's not the message that they want to push and it's kind of like a, a spectacle of black people to, to, to freaking like make money and if it wasn't mo and if money wasn't involved there would it wouldn't be so pushed to the forefront and it wouldn't be so um um sought after because some of them all of these social media people like like some young people on social media behaving outrageously out, out of pocket crashing out all all over the place because it brings eyes to the outrageous shock value um that they present and uh, they end up making money if you are black and you speak your piece on what we're seeing in the media if you don't like seeing the the, the low morality that is often portrayed about the black community in the media from the the trap music to the black women twerking and music videos <laughs> and all over social media the sukahan sukihanas and the sexy reds of the world if you're exactly. black, you take issue and with it, talk about it you are usually called bourgeois sadidi uppity it's respectability and the freaking case, I, I, I blame Blueface for what Krishan turned into, bro. Because, yo, she freaking saw a dude living a certain life. And, it, and she was on, a, on the path following the freaking morals of her parents. And then, ha, ah, as soon as freaking Blueface gets up, she freaking turned into a freaking hood booger. Uh, that literally. <laughs> literally. She turns into the freaking thing that you will freaking see on almost every corner of a freaking ghetto. <laughs> Not selling, but it's freaking overly common in the, in that ghetto to see uh, someone like that. Politics, you're policing black bodies and the like. And it's like, no, I'm black too. And as such, this being my ethnic culture as well, I have a right to have yes. something to say about what yes. I'm seeing going on. Mm -hmm. Your average black American is a middle class, working class, blue collar Jane and Joe. Yeah. The ghetto subculture, black ghetto subculture that we see often portrayed in over inundated and oversaturating the media those black americans make up a tiny tiny percentage of black americans as a whole yet mean but yes but on the part that they're saying that most of black culture are just regular people trying to get by and pay their bills raise their families and just trying to stay safe and because of freaking um the over representation of of uh, of um the negative stereotypes or the negative traits of black ghetto culture in the freaking media or on social media makes the entirety of black people or black culture look bad because everyone on the outside looking in even me from another country looking in that stereotype even end up ends up affecting me because i might try to be living my life to the best i can trying to just make uh, ends meet and trying to go about my day <laughs> yeah trying to protect my peace people just from the media that i've consumed assume that you are dangerous assume that you might be thugging you might be freaking banging you might be dealing and uh, that is i'm not sure if it's done for a reason might be money is in it you know money is in it because yeah and i'm not sure why it's done I might have an idea, but that might be verging on um, conspiracy theor theorizing, you know. But let's continue. But somehow they're in the media, um, overcompensating in the media, oversaturating the media. I know I don't just speak for myself when I say that I'm sick of seeing it, that it's gross, <laughs> that it is destroying what black culture actually is. It's co-opting black culture as a whole and making it seem as though all of black culture is ghetto subculture. I'm yes. not the only black American who takes issue with it. Because like I said, majority of black America is middle class not in the ghettos, not out here perpetuating gang violence, promiscuity, and everything else. And I don't yes. care if you claim it's respectability politics. I guess so. So be it. Because this is gross. It's getting really gross. If they're saying it, respectability politics, as in it, they don't behave in a respectable manner, I, I can see that. But, but God, yeah, they actually do not. ...out here how blatantly disrespectful and low class we're acting on social media and in the media on the internet on tv and you can claim that this is someone else's set of moral standards but no it isn't 
It is, uh-uh. look at Black America in the 50s, in the 60s. Our moral standards back then, drastically different from what we have today, or what we're, we're, we're convincing ourselves is a moral standard today. Every racial group. Yo. Back then, they were more set, more set on family values, keeping the family together, um, building wealth within the black community, and freaking standing, being able to stand on the global stage, shoulder to shoulder, on the same level of respect as other races. And uh, I'm not even going to get into the whole freaking thing about this consp- conspiracy about uh, governments being removing the male figures from from black households to either either by putting them in the ground or incarceration to freaking uh, destabilize the black community so that they have more control and influence over it and even by putting gun stores and liquor stores on every block you know so that you know a dealer can post up you know or a banger or whatever not even going to get into that <laughs> on the face of the planet has their own ghetto subculture within their respective racial and ethnic groups. This is the case for everybody everywhere, white people, Asian people, Mexican people, you name it. The difference is is that those racial groups and those ethnic groups do not allow their ghetto subculture to co-opt the entire culture as a whole and to represent the entire culture as a whole. They don't allow it. Everybody else within... And that note, there are freaking ghettos and slums everywhere in the world and uh, from and and, uh, in every ethnic group. And you don't see much of that. As in, it's not what represents the entire culture <laughs> for, for black people. <laughs> That's what represents the entirety of us. We, we have to do like in-depth research to find out the freaking great black figures to inspire our younger black generation to come up to be like them. And that is work. <laughs> and because it is not easy to find out that information unless you have that, like, you have like an interest and want to go want to delve into that you won't be able to find out for real you won't be able to find out <laughs> and uh, i'm telling you it goes back to the family in- instilling the current morals and structure into their child so that they can think for themselves have, have great uh, critical thinking so that they can question what they are being told and go and do further research so that they can form that come to their own conclusion not just going with the flow with whatever everyone else says in that respect of ethnic group or cultural group or racial group has a right to say how they want to see themselves represented in the media what they want to see and what they don't want to see who gets to speak for them and who does not yeah. except for when you're a black american and you have something to say about the way that you see black americans being portrayed in the media and you have a critique for your peers you can't do it because it's respectability politics if you attempt to do it or you're judging your peers by a set of moral standards that somebody else created which is a farce from the Reconstruction era down through the 60s, Black Americans had their own set of moral standards and social protocols that we adhered to. Ask your grannies, ask your great grannies, they'll tell you. Oh, I yeah. have had just about enough of seeing Black culture being drugged through the muck. Oh, and on that point about um, who, who speaks first, freaking, <laughs> I don't know how long ago it was. Uh, well, at least you see freaking Cardi B speaking to the president. About some issue, I'm not sure what the issue was because I'm saying there there wasn't, I'm just saying to myself, there wasn't anyone else that could freaking do this. And it's probably because she has a large following, but I didn't want her following to pay attention. But dang, there are more, there are people that freaking chose a different route, a a different career path that, um, that could, uh, that could, uh, could have been there. It's just, it's their choice. They can do whatever they're doing. And, and I'm not knocking how they make their money. They they make their money. So, yeah, it's just that that representing all of Black American culture is that is that a good look? No, you could have freaking gotten freaking Mr. Peel up there and Jordan Peel, yeah, yeah, that fa- famous director. Yeah, he is a freaking famous Black person. He could have been up there, but yeah, he probably didn't fit the optics or whatever narrative or whatever. They wanted to portray and uh, right now you chose someone that yes if you watch their music most of their music videos shaking ass twerking yeah her nikki freaking megan the stallion and freaking who the hell's the, the new one that young one freaking ice spice they look good yes but that's the majority of what they're doing 
You can't even watch their videos in public, bruv. And that's a freaking music video, my G. <laughs> by other black Americans who are perverting <laughs> it and turning black culture, something that is beautiful into something perverse. Showing yeah. violence on the internet all the time. The men are constantly rapping and talking about gang violence. Our children are uneducated and stupid. We've created- And rap, rap was used to talking about your, your circumstances. And if that's your circumstances, yes. Yeah, I understand. But not freaking glamorizing it and freaking letting people think that that's something they would want to do or emulate and rap was used to deliver messages to the people things that they should know about to inspire them and and uh show them that there is not only one way outlined for you a cultural standard of promiscuity and single motherhood and when a black american goes to critique Yo, single and judge <laughs> our peers our fellow black americans and critique the condition you need two parents to raise a child mother the nurture father the structure discipline guidance yes you need both of that nurturing comes on the freaking <clears throat> taking care of home being the emotional support and freaking general child rearing tell you let's go in our uh, neighborhoods today they're shut down that's respectability politics you're policing black americans if that's what it is so be it so be yeah. it it needs to be said and yes. in order for us to attempt to escape accountability or responsibility on our own part, we claim that the conditions that we see in black communities is being caused by somebody else. It's not our own fault. It's white people and structural racism or something or another. Yes. It's everybody else's fault except for our own. Give me a break. It's pitiful. It's pitiful that we refuse to take accountability for the things that we see going on in our communities. And sure, we can acknowledge that structural racism and the history of slavery in this country and discrimination and Jim Crow and black code and all of that has played a part in the conditions and some of the conditions that we see in black communities. But we also have to be responsible for the ways in which black americans create their own conditions and contribute to the degenerative effects that we see going on in yes exactly so she's not outright dismissing that um structural or systematic racism exists uh she's she's saying that those were factors beyond our control we can we have to look at our behavior and our self our actions that we have taken to create other things that do not come from that or might be influenced in that and be accountable and look how we can mitigate that from happening in the future or how we can realize that we are the cause of that what are the steps need to be take to be taken to prevent that from happening or to eliminate be accountable for the choices and actions that you make that's what she's saying i assume in our communities black americans who don't want to hear that immediately run to innocence they rush to innocence they claim that Victim it's responsibility hood. politics to call out these issues in our community they claim that it's policing black bodies to call out the low morality and the moral decay in our community call it whatever you want you're not going to get me to shut up about it i'm black this is my culture too i have a right to talk about and critique what is happening in my culture and have something to say about it that's all yes yes exactly 100 percent. that was a wonderful video yo that talks about a situation that a lot of people do not want to talk about. And she is 100% correct. We need to look at these issues in our community and work on um, tangible means to solve them. If we do not, we're going we're gonna to just end up with more people um, uh, assuming the, 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 the role of victim and not actually trying to effect change in the community for the better of them and the generation coming up. So yeah, guys this was a freaking great video go go check out her channel she probably has more stuff like this i'm not sure or she just wanted to get this off her mind you know she's she made a six minute video and i turned this into 21 minutes but yeah let's wrap it up so yeah guys like and subscribe to the channel if you feel like it yeah um leave your thoughts and comments opinions down there down in the comment section um follow the socials links in the description and check out my Twitch. Uh, uh, I'm mostly over there playing games. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to use that time to even try to make a few beats, you know, cause I'm, I'm dabbling in that too. Yeah, yeah, that's a hobby. I wanna learn about it. I wanna, I wanna get better at it, cause it's, it's part of, uh, part of one of the things that I enjoy about music. So yeah, guys, it's Wolf. Yes. See you in the next one. Peace out, Itekimas. Let's get this. Let's get it. Yeah. <laughs>